nothing to increase the cost of the bureaucracy by 50 percent or 20 billion dollars a year. It would be another to have a strike. But to do both of those things at once takes a special, unique kind of incompetence that only this Prime Minister could pull off. Our public servants from the PSAC provide important services to Canadians, and the government values their work. We are committed to reaching agreements that are fair for employees and also reasonable to Canadians. What will it take to end one of the biggest strikes in Canada's history? Day six of that strike happened today. Tensions escalated over the weekend between the union and the feds. The union calls Treasury Board President Mona Forche, quote, incompetent, with Forche dismissing that characterization as kicking and screaming. What will it take to end that stalemate? Let's bring in the front bench to weigh in on that question. Sabrina Grover was a federal liberal candidate in the 2021 election. She's now a principal at Shakti Strategies. Melanie Parody is the former communications director to Aaron O'Toole. She's now the president of Texture Communications. Kathleen Monk is an NDP strategist and principal owner of Monk & Associates. And Laura Stone is a Queen's Park reporter for The Globe and Mail. Hi, everybody. Great hey to there. see you. Uh, Melanie, I'll, I'll start with you. I interviewed Chris Alward tonight. Very different tone uh, than over the weekend. Much more conciliatory. But we've got this letter, this open letter from the feds, basically laying out the deal that they've put in front of the union. What do you think motivates that? Well, it's absolutely a negotiation tactic. They're they're bringing it back into the public square to put the pressure on on the unions and say, you know, we're not we're gonna not going to let you get away with owning the narrative here. We we want to have a say in this as well and make sure the Canadians know exactly what's being uh, what's being bargained here. But what's interesting in, in the the clip that you just showed of, of Pierre Pauly of uh, raising that over twenty billion dollars has been spent by this government. That's a, it's a fifty three percent increase on on public service, and yet we still. We still have this massive challenge. And one of the sticking points seems to be all this other money, an additional 20 plus billion dollars that the federal government has been spending on outside contractors that the public service is trying to bring back in under their control because so much of that is work mm -hmm. that they should be doing. Instead, it's being spent um, to outside consulting firms. Well, it, it also sort of punctuates, Kathleen, the, the political issues, right? It is one of the four issues that the government yeah. laid out around contracting. They said, hey, it's a bit more complicated. Than, and, you know, the, the public service doesn't want that contracting to happen. We know yeah. that's political, too. But like Melanie said, Pierre Polyev is talking about that at the same time, putting the focus on the government for the, the actual strike happening. Yeah. Do you think that's resonating politically? I think it's starting to hurt the liberals. I mean, listen, the opposition have the easy job right now because all they can do is shove that brain, blame back on to Prime Minister Trudeau and the government for failing to get a deal and also pointing out how, how much the public service has grown. But listen, the other fact and why we're seeing the government trying to scramble on their messaging and response to PSAC today is because of the polling that's come out over the weekend. Angus Reid showing that actually, pretty surprisingly, in my opinion, and I follow these, these issues pretty closely, that the public supports the workers. You know, there's this kind of almost fossilized image of unionized workers as kind of, particularly bureaucrats, as being fat cats. And, and what the polling said is that most Canadians, both private sector workers, public sector workers, are supporting these workers' demands for higher wages. And why is that? Because I think everybody's been feeling the pinch over the last few years, right? They're feeling they're losing their purchasing power. In fact, there's another study that came out over the weekend that showed that public servants are basically, when you consider inflation, their, their salaries have leveled out at a 2007 level. That study out by the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives. But listen, the, the fighting that we saw over the weekend and the name calling the things that Minister Forche said and, and, and to some extent Chris Allward yeah. as well are, 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 isn't the best way to get a deal. You get a deal when you're at the table and you're negotiating and I think the best thing is to take it out of the public eye and get it back into the boardroom and the bargaining table. Yeah, to be fair to the government in that instance, it was Chris Allward who swung first on the weekend, right? For and sure, then, yeah, but it's a it's difference when you're making an allegation about not showing up to the table and maybe yeah. some dereliction of duty when it comes to which that. Which I think which is fair is the game. Uh, you, you know, but the kicking and screaming is a characterization that is just below the belt and unbecoming. I mean, I, I felt like the weekend really, um, Sabrina, was sort of unbecoming on all parties. Like, I'm not sure, can it, you know, you're, you're, you're calling people incompetent, then you're saying you're kicking and screaming. Like, I'm not sure people who are now facing, according to Chris Alward tomorrow, you know, delays at... Uh, uh, train stations, at the airport, uh, any of those kinds of things are, you know, hoping for anything other than a resol resolution here. Right. Yeah, I think, you know, the government, I think, is walking a thin line between potentially having public support for 
uh, for this action and for whatever their resolution is and for having that backlash depending on how long this goes, right? I think as soon as people start not being able to get their passports on time if they have a trip coming up next month, as soon as people um, have serious problems with immigration, like all of those kinds of things start to pile up and then no, the strike is no longer about you know, those people on the picket line. It's about me not getting my services that I have asked for. And I think that that's where, like, the government is going to have to start to to kind of figure out what's the best political move about how they move this forward. I think we've talked about before, though, the line between where the government is and where the the uh, PSAC is, in terms of salaries, it's not that far. So there is still a lot of, like, room for them to come to the table and move forward. I think what's also interesting politically, though, is to see where the Conservatives uh, go with this, right? So you have um, Polyev standing up in the House talking about government incompetence, but you also have him on the other side looking to court uh, public sector, to court to court the unions, to bring those people into his fray. But at no point has he said, you know, the idea that that he supports the strike or that he supports increased wages. They just kind of talk about government incompetence. So I think it'll be interesting to watch how that dialogue uh, evolves as well. Mm. I feel like he and other members of the opposition are kind of in a lucky position, Laura, because they 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 can pick and choose how they criticize, right? And it's and it, and it will resonate because there there is a strike. Uh, the government is one of the two negotiating partners, so they, they're less forced to at this moment. That might might, might change, but less kind of forced to uh, you know uh, isolate their their take on everything else. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it's a gift for the opposition because it's so much easier said than done in these situations. And I actually think it's quite smart of the government to come out and write this, quote unquote, open letter to the public today and kind of lay out mm. to the public exactly what the sticking points are and the details of that. Because I think when you do that, the average person t looks at that and says, like, you know, that's not so bad. A, a six or seven thousand dollar raise um, every year. Now they're talking about remote work and somehow studying how to make that possible in the long term and maybe see some of the other issues about seniority and contract work don't really resonate and I'm not sure that those are uh, the key sticking points so it's really a public relations exercise obviously on on both mm -hmm. fronts here both from the union and the liberal government so I think we're going to see this probably I know Kathleen said you know this should be happening at the bargaining table but I think it's probably going to play out mm -hmm. more in the court of public opinion to kind of see where which side the public lands on. But I agree, it's been sort of a slow burn when, the, obviously, when this first happened, I don't think the public really noticed it. But I've heard quite a few people in recent days talking about being worried about getting a passport for their child or saying, I'm traveling in, in a couple months, I hope this doesn't affect me. So I think it is starting mm -hmm. to resonate somewhat in the public. But I think they're looking at, at some of the details of this and, and both the Liberals and the union are trying to plead and present their case to the public to show which side, in the words of the Liberal government, is being more reasonable. Yeah, I'll just quickly qualify before I take a break that the government says in their open letter they propose that 9% increase over three years, which would provide the average employee, average employee, with an extra $6,250 annually, and that they also agreed to a signing bonus. Kathleen was doing some math, and it sounds, so it's over three years and also uh, could include a signing bonus. Not sure on the exact specifics of that, but that's what the, the open letter says. Uh, the front bench panel is sticking around on the other 